and thrive certainly without its human capital indices at their highest level. Education is the messiah of the present and the future. Now it gives hope to the hopeless and is the biggest legacy of the common man. Parents who can't afford a meal work round the clock to send their children to school. Youth who have no help in sight labor day and night to get formally educated. In each classroom lies thousands of ideas waiting for an opportunity to emerge. Enough is enough, the Nigerian president says. Give us our demands, the university lecturers respond. Now the helpless Nigerian student is at home, having to learn a trade, take up a skill, be frustrated up to the point of taking up to crime, and in extreme situations, even get killed. Classrooms are closed and students are rotten away at home, but Nigerian leaders are opening campaign shops, marshalling their future plans and totally, totally ignoring the most significant weapon to fight poverty, which is education. Now, students have been at home in the last four months, frustrated. Their parents are just as frustrated as their word. Who is to blame? The federal government, the academic staff union of universities, or is it you? Welcome to VSAM Suleiman. Now, the Nigerian government has called on the Academic Staff Union of Universities to end its prolonged strike action. The strike has kept the university undergraduates and postgraduate students out of the classroom in the last four months. ASU has insisted that the Nigerian government must meet its demands before its members can resume uh, classrooms. Now, Nigerian President Mohamed Buhari has asked ASU to call off its strike and avoid hurting the next generation. The university lecturers have held out for a respect of their demands and seek the Nigerian government's positive response to their agreements. Now, the labor in Nigeria is also contemplating a solidarity strike action in support of ASU to shut the country down and get the Nigerian government to react positively. Also, in solidarity, the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, NUPENC, has said it may join the labor union in calling for a return of students to the classrooms. Everyone is affected. The children of the ordinary Nigerian are held back. They are delayed from progressing and such delays are fast becoming the Nigerian norm. Jeremy on the square to unpack this. For the obtained time, as Professor Victor Emmanuel Osodike, who is the national president of the Nigerian Lecturers Union, and of course uh, in uh, the United Kingdom, we have Ms. Bao Alamu Latif, who is a law lecturer at the University of Hull. Now, gentlemen, good to see you both, and thank you for your time. Now, well, let's start with you, Professor Osodike. We've had this conversation back and forth, and uh, you've been in the struggle, but uh, quite frankly, some Nigerians uh, seem to begin to understand the issues. Now, let us have a, a bird's eye view of what the situation is at the moment. Thank you very much for uh, inviting us. Uh, we want to start by saying that, what is a university? A university universal, where you have lecturers from the unit from all over the world, where you have students from all over the world, if the system is working. But today, go around Nigerian universities. You will hardly see any foreign students in any Nigerian university, whether it's from the Republic or from Cameroon. Go around the university, you will hardly see a foreign student, a lecturer in Nigerian universities. But Nigerian people are trooping outside this country, those who can afford it, to go and get quality education outside the country. Lecturers are leaving this country to get good pay, that is commensurate with their rank, and to, as you have all over the world. So that is the problem why ASU is fighting today. You enter a typical university in Nigeria, you see students sitting on bed floor. You see students having lectures from windows. You have a lecturer speaking to a class of 1,000 without even a public address system. You have hostel where 90% of the students are living outside the university hostels. 
So that is the problem while ASU is on strike. And this started long ago. In 2009, the federal government reached an agreement with ASU, one, on funding, two, on pay structure for the academic staff, three, other issues that have to do with autonomy. Autonomy means that the university will take care of its, all its activities as in the laws of the universities. It we agree in 2009 that by 2012, this agreement will be renegotiated in tandem with what happened all over the world. But we are in 2012. 13 years later, that agreement has not been renegotiated. These are the major crises. That's why we are on strike. When we started this strike in, 20, um, in uh, February, our idea was that within two weeks, this issue will be resolved. And that's why we call it a rollover strike of four weeks. We know that within those four weeks, this issue will be resolved. The government is serious. But for those first four weeks, we never called for any meeting. They just left us alone. We made another eight weeks. They didn't call us for a meeting. Then we rolled over for 12 weeks, which is when they now call us for a meeting. And the government has set up a negotiation a, a negotiation committee again, another one, to meet with us. And we met with them. And within three weeks, the negotiation committee of ASU and government reached an agreement on all the issues that had to do with the agreement. And they are, that's as of 16 July, sorry, 16 uh, June 2022. We reached an agreement. Uh, and they were supposed to go back to their, to their principal, to the president, to give permission for them to sign. And we also went back to our members to see whether they agree to give, the, give permission to sign. It's, it would be two weeks in three days' time, the government had not reached out to us, whether positive or negative. Uh, All we had let yesterday me take was a break here sick. from. Uh, I'll come back to you, Professor Osoreke. Let me quickly bring in uh, Latif here. Uh, Latif, uh, you're not new to what's happening in Nigeria. And uh, let's first of all gauge your feelings. Uh, four months down the line, and I know you have quite a number of uh, you know, relationships back home here in Nigeria. Uh, how do you feel with the situation of things uh, amongst, uh, uh, between Nigerian government and the lecturers? Uh, Suleiman, first of all, thank you for having me on. Well, I think, uh, well, th there's been a freeze there. Um, uh, Latif, if you can... Uh, log back in that seemed to be uh, a freeze in the connection we lost that connection let's uh, go back to uh, okay i understand latif is back latif if you can hear me uh for a bit we we lost you there but good thing you're back okay uh so Lymon, i was trying to explain that uh professor oshida care has painted a picture of the true situation of things in the nigerian university and of course, I feel greatly disappointed that things have really degenerated. Well, not again. Uh, well, our producers will see what we can do about that uh, to re-establish the connection. Uh, Professor Azotica, let's quickly come back to you while we sort uh, that connection uh, with uh, Latif. You know, the, the, the situation you painted now, uh, one wonders uh, if the president, not the presidency, if the president understands the true dynamics of situation of things. Uh, otherwise, I'm quite sure the, uh, you, you saw the headlines today, the president has asked ASU to call off the strike. He's pleading with your union. Please, we are reaching a stage where please we not solve the problem. We want to solve the problem of Nigerian university system. And for me, and as a president who is living in the next 10 months' time, he should leave a legacy behind. And that legacy would that he had, I have restored the dignity of Nigerian university system in such a way that foreign students can come here, as our students are going out and pay in foreign currency, that foreign lecturers can come here and teach to up the standard of our university and better rank in the world. That is what we expect the president who has 10 months to go to, to, to leave behind. Not telling us that after the union had been on strike for five months and the president is pretend not to say that he didn't know what happened over five months, I say go back. So what are we taking back? What will look at the student we have delayed for six months? That still remain the same thing? And that is the problem that I expect the president to ask. Will he be happy that we go back to this classroom where students still look, use bossy burner as, 
as a, we use stove as bonsi burner. We go to a classroom where a student will graduate in a engineering faculty without practical. We go to a university where students graduate from my faculty of medicine without, uh, without pr practical component. Is that what we want? That we are isolated? We call ourselves giant of Africa and our students are running to Ghana? Or the Ghana lecturer went to, to on strike and the government took read notice and started working on it. Ghana University, well, what is Nigeria about today? Nigerians are, Nigerians are from our calculation, what we had. Nigeria pay more than 200 billion naira every year to Ghana University as school fees. If I only work in that money, will be safe for our economy. So that is the place what the president needs to ask those who, who work for him, those who talk to him, who, those who brief him, that our university is good enough to attract foreign students. Can any minister, can the president allow his children and his grandchildren to school in Nigerian universities? That's well, the question. I, I, the I think, I think th th this is the best time for me to try, uh, you know, uh, once more to connect with uh, Latif. Latif, uh, I hope the connection is better this time. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to throw this, uh, but first, let's uh, get your opening on this. You were saying something before we lost you for a bit. Okay, yeah, uh, Suleiman, thank you again. I was trying to explain that Professor Oshodeke has painted a true picture of the situation of things in the Nigerian University. And of course, it is very pathetic, and I feel also personally disappointed. And like you rightly said, I have been part of the system, and I regard myself also as a part of the system, even as I now you know, teach abroad. But the problem is, when I listened to the president a few days back, I feel, or I felt even more disappointed that the president spoke as though the problems are not for him to solve. He spoke as though the problem were for someone else. I expected the president to be much more, I would say, inspiring in trying to tell us what exactly And again, we have that glitch and, uh... Well, you know, Professor Osirika, uh, listening uh, to your colleague uh, uh, Latif, who uh, lectures uh, outside the country, specifically in the UK, uh, some of the key concerns you've raised. Uh, now, we need to first of all talk about the golden days of Nigerian universities, Professor Osirika. Uh, we understand at that point in time, some of the key concerns you raised, uh, Nigerian universities had foreigners, expatriates, who brought in their children uh, to school here. But the case is quite different now. Now, we have people in, uh, in, in, in academics who have been negotiating with you. Uh, you have uh, two key ministers that have been having this conversation on behalf of the Nigerian government. Are you saying so far uh, that conversation hasn't reached uh, a point where you can say, we're calling off the strike in a matter of days. Thank you very much. Like I said in my opening remarks, is that we met with the committee, federal government renegotiation team, a national renegotiation team, met, and the federal government team was is headed by Professor Emeritu Professor Nimi Briggs, a renowned professor. We met. The first question we asked them, did you have the mandate of the government to negotiate on their behalf? And they said, yes. And we started negotiation. It didn't take three weeks. It didn't take three weeks for we and that committee to reach an understanding and came up with a draft agreement. All they needed to do is to sign. But they insisted that we haven't come this way, give up permission to go back briefly to our leaders, those who sent us, to give up permission to sign on their behalf, while we also went on our own. And that was 16th June. Today we are 13th July. They have not come back to us. It's not their own doing, I'm in touch with them. And they say they have not got any report from the government. And then there's a government that is with a report that should just be signed, an agreement will be, and then we and then we sign, and then the issue of Utah's. I talk about um I talk about university of, uh, autonomy. There's no university in the world. My friend, my friend in uh, uh, who is in a uh, Hall University should tell us, is there any university of the world? Where salaries of lecturers are paid for a Carter general office, office alleged to be very corrupt, as reported by EFC recently, is there any university in the world where the salary of lecturers and staff in universities that is supposed to have autonomous by autonomy, autonom that be autonomous by law, university may not act, that their salaries are paid from the office of Carter general? 
where VC goes to, those, to the queue online to beg a general to correct if there are issues, is it even that you have such wastage? So those are the issues. But now, we've not had anything that we say, go and sign. You tell us we are finished testing, we've not got any report to say, we are accepted. And the president will come out to say, yes. uh, so, so uh, let's, let's get this before. straight. Let, let's get this straight so that uh, those watching outside Nigeria, other Africans can understand uh, what we're dealing with at this moment. Uh, uh, Professor Osodeke, if I get you clearly, uh, the lecturers are not talking about uh, their welfare alone. They're also talking about the decay, the rot uh, in the ivory towers. Is that right? The major issue we actually have in this one is the issue of the welfare of lecturers and then the state of Nigerian universities. As I speak to you today, you can go around and tell me, and we also expect our journalists to do investigative journalism. There is something put out recently on UNN where the, 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 the toilets in the hostess, even an animal will not go there to, to eat, eat to herself. And we have this all over the country. And the sign is very clear. We don't have forest students coming again as they were in the 60s. When I was a student in the 80s, I was in the State University, River State University of Science and Technology then. In my department alone, we have lecturers from four, five different countries, a Nigerian, a Senegalese, somebody from Australia, somebody from uh, uh, Sri Lanka, and somebody from Poland in one department. Today, do you still have that? If, do you still have up to five lecturers in the University of Ibadan? So that is the problem too. In those days, a, a, a student of a messenger, a student of a trader, a student of a driver who sit in the same class with the student, with the, with, the, with, the, with the son of a minister, the son of a president, the son of a senator, and then live in the same hostel with them. But look, I don't see this country. So they take our resources and send their children abroad. Instead of investing those resources in our own university. By the last central bank report, Nigeria pay about 1.6 trillion naira annually as school fees to allow universities. And you need the half of that to invest our own. That is why we're on strike in the interest of our youth, in the interest of the future of Nigeria. So that people like my friend who are with us here, who probably say I'm a lecturer in Nigerian universities. Where were people living and we were not coming in? Our doctors are living, nobody is coming in. Which we, 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 is so sad. I think that's why I think people need to bring the president properly as to what is happening. In before, 2013, we, 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 before we get into that briefing, I, I think it was Latif. Good thing Latif is back. It was Latif who was, uh, you know, telling us about the attitude uh, of uh, the president of the country and how he should handle this matter. Latif, you're back again, and I hope we can we can get uh, well an uninterrupted conversation with you this time. Apologies again. Okay, all right, Sulaiman. So I'm very glad to be back again, and I also hope that this time around we won't have any uh, internet glitch. So, and, and uh, what are we doing? What, what are we hoping? Uh, well, we lost that connection again. Perhaps uh, we should do. Uh, I'll tell my producers that we should uh, get to Latif over the phone and uh, uh, get this conversation. This is something so serious, Professor Osodeke. And now you're talking about, you just painted a very uh, bad picture of what Nigerian universities are. Uh, what are the university's lecturers, uh, you know, doing? Now, I'm talking about the body of uh, your, your union. What are they doing now that you're still on strike? Are they all with you on the same page saying that, look, this is a fight to finish. We're not moving an inch until the government does everything on the list? Well, as we speak to you, 95% of our members are solidly behind us. After five months of applying hunger as a weapon of defeating us in this struggle, five months, but my member 95% are with us. Those areas where we have a few, a few state universities where we have a few people who have come back, is because the government wants to pretend that the system is working. Go to Ambrose Ali, they are, and, and it's a strategy the country, the NUC, to look at. In Ambrose Ali University, they said they are having an exam. The students have not been taught. They said they are having an exam for somebody who is missing, using, uh, what do you call it, a CBT system. 
a medical student, no practical. You have a CBT to graduate a medical student, to graduate engineering. You are having an exam. One by one, eighty percent of your staff, lecturers, are not teaching. I see you are having an exam. Go to that university today. Is that what we want as a country? You want to force your people to pretend that you're having a university education? Why are they just to turn out people? That is how sad it is. Delta State University, the same thing. And what have you? Want to force the people, force a few back? How will you get good treatment? How will you get good lecturing? Now, with what when we just, with, with, uh, again, let me butt in here, Professor Sodek, apologies. Now, though, you, with what you just said, let's bring this into perspective, looking at Nigeria, which has one of the lowest human capital indices in the world. How does this affect uh, uh, the products, uh, our products, Nigerian products in the world? I, 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 would, I would give you two. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a group now, our colleagues who are going outside for a a master for a program sponsored by the TED Fund, and they are going to repeat their master's program let, because those countries don't let, believe let, in what that right. They are going for a repeat of the, the yes, they will go outside the country, train by Nigerian money to repeat their master's program. Repeat the master's so? program. The impression that we believe that what we produce here, as far as they are concerned, didn't meet their standard because of the practical component. So what we are saying, we are in a very dire situation. I expect this president, the present government, to ensure that the legacy is going to be by to change the trajectory, to not have a system that works, that a student can come from Ghana the way we are going to Ghana. So it does not, it's not working. You see, we as academics, you know, we should not deceive ourselves and pretend that things are working. We should not deceive ourselves to say we are just going back. To ensure that we turn our people so that today you have building collapsing every day in Nigeria. Were they doing so in the 70s and 80s? That tells that something is wrong. Today, when you check today, go to our teaching hospitals, half of the people are leaving the country, they are going away. Because what they were expecting, that when they leave, they will have SY equipment and no more there. And then you train there and they go outside the country to go and practice what they learn. Lecturers are leaving. If I see them working, my young colleague, Red Latif, will not be going outside this country. If let you are fully remunerated, you want to ensure that it's in Nigeria, train Nigerians, lawyers. It is so sad. And I believe that this government that people trusted so much should be able to change the trajectory from this idea of just turning to our students, why the student of non Nigerian, Nigerians, why their students run abroad. Recently, I saw a governor. The son was who have a convocation, and he was standing without his son with three other with two, three other governors standing for just a graduate of first degree, and all the governors are laughing and smiling. It's you know, so you sad. Know, you know, uh, I think that no one in Nigeria would say uh, they missed out on that headline you're talking about, uh, about uh, uh, a governor from southern Nigeria whose son graduated in UK. Now you've held a series of meetings with the government, uh, the Minister for Education and Labour and Employment. Uh, what are your deductions from these meetings? Like I said, the person who created most of this problem we have today is the Minister of Labour and Employment, who single-handedly stopped the salary of all our members instead of addressing the issues. Uh, that is uh, the Minister of Labour and Employment. The Minister of Education stepped in and through his step and his panel, we negotiated and we have complete negotiation. What we are waiting for now is for the government to say, yes, we have seen it, go ahead and sign. And then that's all. Very simple. It doesn't take one day. We have finished testing of UTAS. And from our own observation, UTAS pass. We will implement UTAS. We differ from X, Y date. And that's all. Should you that know, be a problem? You know, what you say? Frankly, Professor Osorike, again, I jump in here. Quite frankly, the Nigerian education system isn't uh, on the same level as uh, what's uh, obtainable in some parts of even Africa, let alone Europe and America. Uh, are these parts of the things you're clamoring for? I know you spoke about them earlier on, because we need to now, you know, put a finger on uh, the crux of this whole. Uh, on pass between the government and your union? That are very prominent. The revitalization fund, 
when the government agreed that every year they will put 200 billion in Nigerian University over six years. I was never done. If that thing had been done, we would not be where we are today. And for a country like Nigeria, where is 200 billion to revamp your, all your universities? A country that can spend four trillions on fuel subsidy. Fuel subsidy. Four trillion. But cannot give 200 billion to revamp its university. That is the pathetic of Nigeria. So those are what I'm saying. When you go to Ghana today, there are universities. We're rushing there, is it not? Go to the typical university in Nigeria. You see foreign Europe, America, Asia. They are in the University of Ghana. They are in Ghana University. But now you don't have from being a republic coming here. We tell you that something is wrong, that this government will expect to correct. And Nigeria should ensure that it's for, because they elected this government. They should ensure they correct these things. And I'm so happy today that the NSC is joining, Nupeng is joining, is we do align with us, and all other unions in Nigeria are aligning. Together, we are being affected, all of us. Together, we should come and ensure that this struggle is fought and won on behalf of the teeming Nigeria population and our children who have this substandard education, where their children are having good education outside the country. Five months now, university are short. Their children are busy having good education. One is going to attend graduation with three other governors. This is a public expenditure. There's public money. Uh, Latif, good to know that you're there. And uh, let's quickly let you get this over uh, so that we can jump in. Uh, you were telling us about how bad the situation is. And also, you also tried to talk about how you would have loved to see the president handle this. Yeah, thank you, Sulaiman. I'm very glad to be back again. And I was trying to explain that I felt really disappointed that the president spoke in the manner that he spoke. He spoke as though the responsibility to confer solution to the problem lies elsewhere. He spoke hopelessly, I mean, like someone who has lost hope. In fact, he spoke as someone who is already tired or over by the problem. So the point is, I do not really have any disagreement with Professor Ushidake. I think he has painted the perfect picture of the rot in the Nigerian university system, which has really been a perennial problem from government to government. And this particular government has simply shown that it is not particularly different from the previous government who have also failed you know, to attend to the need in the education sector, particularly at the tertiary institution. But you see, when we look at the problems, and we paint all of the teachers, of course, to reflect that the political elite, they don't seem to appreciate the place of education in the sustainable development goal, or even for the development of the country. But we paint the picture showing that the elite, they are truly totally irresponsible. And I want to say that with all sense of responsibility. Yes, we can continue to say all of that. So the question I think I want to have at this point, and I want to really be very honest here, is what's respect upon the effect of all the life of life in addressing this problem. I said, I do not want to repeat the problem. I beg the problem. I do not want to restate the rot in the system. We all know this rot. I mean, it's truth, as we say in law, it for itself. But the question is, how effective has strike been as a tool of addressing the problem, particularly when we have what we call prolonged, indefinite, and start strike, the kind of strike that we have in Nigeria? And I think this is where I want to be doing a test, disagree with Professor Oshodeke, as well as achieve a lot in trying to bring development to our educational sector. The little research that we have today in terms of infrastructural improvement. And even in terms of tech fund and all of that, we can attribute them to the struggle of ashes, the struggle over the years. But people have also said, and I tend to agree with them, that over the years, maybe in the last 20 years or thereabouts, ASU also has, you know, sort of become part of the problem. So that when we address this problem, you know, focusing on government, on government alone, as rightly as we should, we should also be able to look inward among ourselves, at ourselves, effective is let me jump in here so that you, uh, for clarity purposes. Uh, uh, good thing Professor Osodeke is uh, here, and uh, we all uh, also have other members of the union watching at this point in time. Uh, this is everybody's concern, uh, as you've rightly put it. But uh, 
if you say, well, strike actions uh, are not the uh, way to go, perhaps uh, you should be able to let us in on some of the uh, ways that this can be sorted out. Okay, so like, well, I've not actually said strike action is not the way to go. I've only asked a question that we should also ask. Okay. We need to interrogate or investigate the potency of the strike action, you know, as a tool to address some of these challenges, mm -hmm. which Professor Osho Deke has rightly painted. Now, my point is this, and I need to also make this clear. Strike action is a very stable industrial relations tool worldwide, even under the laws of Nigeria, and other international instruments like the International Labor Organization's uh, instrument. So that's not that about that. But where I have problems is the attitude of prolonged strike. Strike as the use of employee in other clients is employed for few days to call attention to problems. Well, when you shut down the university for two months or more, as we have seen in the recent years, then you begin to wonder to what effect are we going this route? Particularly when you are dealing with a government that I also regard as irresponsible with all the respect, a government that doesn't seem to care about the future of its youth or the future of the children. So the question is if a foreign do something over and over and over again. Is it not our time that we start to strategize? So what do I propose? I do not think to long strike as being able to address this problem. I think it will have been proper to go on strike maybe two or three days, call attention to the challenges, then we continue to negotiate. But, but, but does it, doesn't it look to you, uh, uh, Latif, doesn't it look to you that the government uh, uh, is taking advantage over the union and Nigerians uh, if that is done? Because uh, before now, you would also agree that ASU has always done the same, that you've just highlighted, what they call warning strike. Come in, go back to the classrooms, but uh, the government seemed to be adamant. So, Laiman, you see, this argument has always been the response. That government doesn't understand any other language than indefinite strike, than total strike. You see, perhaps we need to go into the history of ASU. ASU, I would say, was a child of necessity. And most of the glorious days of ASU, you can locate them in the military day, when it was necessary or important to the militant civil life. So I think hangover of the military era where we think we can resort to total strike, indefinite strike, and all of that. So in a democracy, what I think is that we can actually continue to negotiate. So the fact that government seems to exploit this, the fact that government will not listen, does not mean that we should keep shutting down the system. I'll give you an example. The schools have been shut down for over four months. And I'm not saying ASU is totally responsible for this. And I want to read very clear on that. My point basically is that when we apportion blame, perhaps in degree, we might say government has a 90% of the blame. But we cannot say on our part, and what I say on our part, I also stand myself as all of the academics in Nigeria. We cannot say as people that we do not also have roles that we play in this failure. So when we shut down school for four, five months, six months, now, hopefully in another one or two months, the strike will be called over. Then the question you ask yourself is this. For the five or six months that the strike has taken place, what exact physical improvement has happened to the university? Nothing. Instead, what you have had for the six months, and like we have always had in the past, is that the facility will continue to deteriorate. The student will continue to lose focus. So for me, really, I don't think we can sustain this idea of indefinite strike, total strike, you know, as we tend to employ the words. I think we can always employ strike as cautionary tool. Two days, three days, call attention to your parents, I mean, to the challenges, and then go back to your work. Two days, three days, we can do that intermittently without actually bringing so much disruption into the system. And, and I say this with process of responsibility as someone who has also been part of the system. Let, 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 let's, let's bring in Professor Osodeke uh, for him to respond to see if that is uh, something that the union uh, ever considered uh, in its fight uh, for these demands. 
Thank you very much. You see, my my Latif is in a very comfortable place now. He can say this. If you go to Nigeria, you will say you will not. Why am I saying this? Is that if the system is working, we really have left. He will not. Two, yes, we have told Nigeria, give us alternative. We don't just start a strike. On this strike we are now, we met with the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to discuss this issue with him. He handed out our paper we gave him to the minister said, go and implement. We met with the Senate president to appeal to them to intervene. We met with the speaker. We met, the chief of, we met with the head of uh, chief of staff to the president. We met with all these people. Then finally, NIREC, Nigerian Interior Council, made up of all the two major regions of the country, intervened. And the president said, I'm going to put the three months together to solve this problem quickly. Head of service, Minister of Labor, Minister of uh, uh, Education. For six months, they did not call up for one meeting. Then we'll clap and go back. Two, thank God you are, you, have, you are showing some clips. In the country where this, my friend, is, do you have a classroom like that anywhere in the world? Do we have? You are showing those clips. These are just minor. Three, a professor in Nigeria today earn less than $600 a month. $600 a month. Can it take you home? I know recently, some university in the UK threatened a strike. And within two days, those issues were hand, were, 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 they transcended and resolved the issues. In Ghana, the same thing. But Nigeria were on strike for five months, and the president pretended he didn't know about the strike. Is that where you are going to use this uh, approach of uh, go and beg them and see if they will do anything? When all their children are no more there, that is our crisis. It's different from others. Two, the people in, in the primary and secondary use the approach to be suggested by this present set of men. Look at the classroom. Do the approach suggested by this uh, set of people who believe that ASU is uh, going on strike too much. And today, the primary and secondary school have been destroyed, public, around the country. In the public primary and secondary school, where we all of us attended, all these big men you see around today attended, half less than 5% of the Nigerian children today attended those schools. Is that what we want for our let me, let, me, let, let me bring in Latif. Latif, uh, there's this uh, clip of footage uh, of uh, President Buhari when he was president-elect. And uh, specifically, clearly, on, equivocally, he said uh, he wasn't supporting the uh, CONFAB because he felt that that money was uh, misplaced. So that was a president then who thought a whole lot about the education system. What do you think has gone wrong that uh, a man who once said so much about revamping the education sector uh, hasn't actually spoken uh, pointedly on this issue? Okay, uh, Sulaiman, thank you so much. You see, I think the promise the president made during his presidential campaign, I've also seen the clip, is just one of the many promises that have turned out to be lies. It's that when I spoke in the manner that I spoke earlier, I did not do that to actually in any way, you know, uh, I would say, commend the government. What I'm saying that when we emphasize and keep emphasizing the failure of government, which is apparent and which is also perennial, we should also not fail to look inward and see how do we as stakeholders also contributing to this. When Prof was talking earlier, he spoke about how the classroom all of them have gone back and all of that. So, like, as you may be aware, we have an agency of government or institution which is called the National University Commission in Nigeria. This commission accredits programs, not only the thought program, also the facility. They do this year in, year out, and they give pass marks to universities. Ask me who are the members of ASUS. Who are the people who go around to this university to accredit, accredit programs? Who are the people who say programs are okay? Who are the people who accredit the facility? The same academic member, the same scholar. So my point here is that why don't we employ that particular mechanism, for example, to encourage our member? If a university does not meet the kind of standard that Professor that you have spoken to now, why do we need to that? Why do we accredit their program? So it can not in one breath have your members participate in a way in the rough 
and then turn around to want to say the government is only responsible for everything. And like I've said, the government is clearly responsible. They have shown this over and over again from government to government. And that is why I said I'm not surprised that President Muhammad Buhari, perhaps I'm only shocked, that President Muhammad Buhari has also followed in the trail of his predecessor. But the question is, why we shut down like this? And when it is indefinite, when it is not something temporary, what we do for months, we have, have been assisting. I school in Nigeria, I taught in Nigeria. I've been home for at least 11 months on different locations. I'm not saying how to be solely, you know, blame what they for this, but I'm saying we can change this modus of the Randy that has not really worked, that has become part of the problem. And, uh, you know, what? No, go ahead. Hello? Okay, as a trade union, the paramount thing that a trade union should fight for is the interest of its member. And of course, also the work environment, which I know is part of what ASU is asking for. But when you do that, you also consider the impact of your approach on the system. And like I said earlier, without repeating myself, when the shark is covered by another one or two months, when you go back to the system, nothing would have changed. Except that government will have released some funds that will go here or there. And then you go back to the same cycle, in another one or two years, another person of the company, then it, I mean, wants to go on its own track. The government will continue to fail. They have not shown that they are responsible or capable enough. So as stakeholders, we can minimize our own contribution to the run by resisting, I would say, the frustration to always go on this prolonged and prolonged strike. A strike for three to five days is enough. The strike is not a strike. Like Trump said earlier, earlier in February, there was a strike action in the youth by some university. In the UK, you have up to 150 or there about university. Only 35 of them participate. So when you have a strike action in Nigeria, because of our over-centralized system, you shut down the entire system. You even shut down the state university that sometimes do not have anything to do in the national you know, uh, issues affecting the federal university. So when we do this and we continue this cycle, we also, I mean, contribute in a way to the problem in the system. This is what I'm saying we can look at. Because we can sit down here to tomorrow analyzing the problem, how the elites have failed, how they have not done this, how they have not done that. Well, no, 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 certainly, let, let's, start, let's start working at a solution. Some of the key things you raised here. Uh, uh, Professor Osodeke, uh, Latif also talked about uh, the NUC. What's the place of the NUC in all of this if the body would uh, at almost every time tell the government that it's A-OK -okay with the universities? Speak. As academics, speak. it's better to speak from the uh, from the part of information which to be missing. Let me explain to you. When you check the agreement with Richard Zohar and I, that we're asking to be reviewed today, one of the items there is review of NUC law. Ask my friend there in his country, do you have a central body regulating activity in the university? The answer is no. And we're insisted that in Nigeria, let's change the law. And you see, you can't be the one funding the university and the one evaluating whether they are meeting the standard. That is what we have requested for. I think you should know, as happened all over the world. And we are saying, leave the issue of accreditation to the academic bodies. Today, when you go to the medicine, you have the, 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 the uh, MD can, you have all the, the lawyer have their own, the law have their own, NBA, that they should, be, they should be led to the regulatory body. Not you that is funding a system, the one also regulated, uh, checking whether you made the system yourself. That is the problem we have with NUC. And it's still there. The uh, guideline for accreditation is very weak. And you can look for it. The guideline for accreditation is very weak. And we have been asking that this one should be reviewed to bring it to standard, which they have refused. So you should not be saying, ask for members, go to do accreditation and they, they, and they, and they, and they did. So it is wrong. And, that is one. and in all of this, what, what uh, capacity has the TED Fund played? You see, you can go around Nigerian universities today. 99% of the new structure you have in Nigerian university, 100% of staff training are done by NUC. You can check which is the product of our struggle. If we have done what my friend is saying, that we just go two days and come back, 
Today, our universities will be exactly like the primary and secondary school, taking over some private gladiators just to have to make money. Today, you can check Nigeria. Our private university, you know what? You can check. So what am I saying? That look, you should understand a situation before you start condemning that system. As a union, when you share the agreement, I will send to you when we are through. One of the items said, review the Nigerian uh, 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 NUC law. You bring in, tell them what happened in the world. So that when somebody is going to accredit a university, you go with the standard of what you need, what the profession of that person needs. Now you say, uh, for you to have, you have six lecturers, you have five lecturers, and you have score A, you have score B. And that thing has not been done. Two, and, uh, said it and uh, categorically. Let, let, let me come to Latif. We're winding down. Latif, you know, there are also suggestions. Uh, maybe this will resonate more with you. There are suggestions that universities uh, in the country, in Nigeria, should aim at self-funding. Uh, is that a possibility? Yeah, it is a possibility because the funding model, if you ask me, for universities all over the world, including Ghana, Okay, it's not restricted to government grant alone as we tend to do in Nigeria. Our universities in Nigeria rely almost more on government funding. That is not sustainable. Here in the UK, government funding, which is called grant, which comes from the Education Council, takes less than one third of the university funding. Each university prepares their budget every year, and what government gives them as grant, again, takes less than one third. When you go to the U.S., government grant or funding also take less than 15 percent. So where do they get other funding? They get funding from rich tax. They get funding from private endowment. And more importantly, they get from tuition fees. Now, tuition fees in the U.K. university represents over 20 percent of the budget of the university, which is generally their internal revenue. The same thing in the U.S. But in Nigeria... I think the problem we have again is that in our public university, appropriate tuition fees have not been introduced. Mm -hmm. And people have argued, I don't know if Professor Osedeke will confirm or deny this, that actually is part of those who have said, no, you cannot introduce fees. Yes, we understand the social economic reality of Nigeria. We understand there are those who may not be able to afford tuition fees. But what happens to government scholarships? What happened to loans? What happened to labor earnings? Where are you engaged graduates? So you, know, no, you, know, you know, no doubt, uh, Latif, no doubt, these are, these are issues that definitely, uh, apologies for jumping in there because we're rounding off. These, uh, no doubt, are issues that must be looked into. So, Professor Osodeke, your closing uh, comment uh, from my closing, you. My, my closing remark is this. I thought my friend would have mentioned Germany. I thought my friend would have mentioned Sweden whether the student pays school fees. Why just UK and America? Where is the minimum wage in UK? Where is the minimum wage in the US? What does the professor earn in the UK? What does the professor earn in the US? A man earns 30,000 a month, and you want him to pay fee for a student, pay, pay competitive fees. That is the problem. There's a great difference between the two. I think that's why our police are running out of the country. We must develop our country. We must ensure that our children, whether you are from the poor or you are the rich, you have access to education. In UK, our colleagues talking about well, what is the percentage of, of their budget goes to education. In US, what is the percentage of budget goes to education? In Ghana, 16 to 20 percent. In South Africa, 20 percent. In Nigeria, 5.4 percent. That is the problem. So it's not about what people are, people are already paying. Students are already paying for the system. So it's not about saying they must pay school fees as soon as they We are against paying of tuition fee. Because if government the, 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 uh, uh, put up to 15% or 20% of the budget to education, we will not have this crisis. Nigeria has 5.4%, the lowest level in the whole world. So that is why our problem is that's what we're talking about. And then we believe where education is a, is, a, is a priority, and we don't allow our people, the intelligent, want, intelligent our, our intelligentsia, to run out of the country as they are doing presently, to go and aid a country that's already developed. Let me tell you, Nigeria is giving so much aid to US and UK. You train your doctors here, they run out there to go and give them safe for free. You train your lecturers here, lecturers here, they run outside to go and look for money. They take their personal interest, their personal comfort, they place above the comfort of a country. And that's why they are running away. And some of us who are here will not run away. We will fight the system until the system ensures 
that is a well funded the Nigeria children who are poor, who cannot have access to this. People running around to go and pay 10,000 uh, pounds as school fees per annum have quality education. Well, we no have, doubt. No, no, no doubt, I Professor Osodeke. It's, it's a fine place for us to live. It will keep the engagement on. And of course, I will also be reaching out to Nigerians living in diaspora, especially some other colleagues, to also provide solutions to this uh, uh, all important uh, issue between the Nigerian government and its populace, because the lecturers are also. Paris. Nice wrap on the show. I'd like to thank you, Professor Emmanuel Osodeke, and of course, uh, many thanks again for joining us, uh, Ms. Bao Alamu Latif, uh, University of uh, at the University of Hull. Uh, thank you for your time. For all those uh, sending in messages, thank you for your time. We keep this conversation going here on the square. I'm Sulaiman. Bye bye. <laughs>